what's going on? It's Ben from Ben with Gaming Studios here today, bringing you another tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a 1.11.2 Spigot server. The next video will be Craft Bucket. It's relatively the same process, but um, just for the purposes of the video, we're only going to do Spigot in this one. So, you know, you're going to go ahead and open up your, uh, we're just jump right into this. You're going to go ahead and open up your web browser, right? And you're going to type in git bucket dot org i'll link this in the description this will come up now you're going to go over to spigot scroll down it'll be the first one on the list january 22nd 2017 download it you gotta wait through the the five seconds i have ad block so it may uh come up with a pop-up yep you make me uh do this um you're gonna after you download this you're gonna get the file down here hit keep um, you're gonna make a new folder named server or whatever you're gonna go ahead and drag I don't know why I did that you're gonna go ahead and drag this in here rename it to the spigot without all the version stuff this right here is the um, command file that you're gonna need to run the server I'm gonna link that in the description so don't worry about it if you edit it you um this is the one I'm gonna link. It'll come up with this. You're gonna want to go ahead and rename this right here, the spigot.jar. I'm gonna make sure I do that and the one I link so that you guys don't have to do that. Over here, I'm gonna go ahead and set it down to one gigabyte because I don't know what you guys computers can handle. RAM wise, uh, to check your RAM, you're gonna type in dx diag like that. This will come up. Just run it. It uh it'll load and right here is your RAM. Now every gigabyte of RAM is 1024 megabytes meaning so if you just type in you know the number right there 16 384 divided by 1024 i have 16 gigabytes of ram meaning i could obviously run much more than one gig but this is just for you guys so you know how much to allocate for your server once you're done figuring how much you want to use for your server you're going to save it i'm using notepad plus plus i'll put the link in the description and then you're going to want to run the dot bat, which will start up this. Um, you're going to wait for it to start. It should only take a second. Mine might be a little slow. These my computers have uh, been off lately. But um, just give that a minute. It's going to do loading libraries. It'll go through the whole startup process. Um, now the first time, it's going to go through and it's going to shut down. And I'll explain to you guys why it does that once it decides it wants to start. Which it doesn't look like it's doing. Sorry guys, so I'm just going to go ahead and explain. It'll go through and it'll shut down the first time. Here, I'm going to go ahead and restart the, the console and see if it'll start faster. See, you need to agree to the EULA to, in order to run the server. So what you do is, is you go right here, you open it, you, need to, you don't need to open anything special. You change this to, from false to true, close it out, save it, run it. And then, you know, you wait for it to start. It's going to create, you know, the worlds, set up the melon growth modifiers, <laughs> all that good stuff. So while this is creating, you know, there's going to be the question, how do you port forward? I will go ahead and show you guys that right after I show you, you know, that the server works. You can start up Minecraft version uh, 1.11.2. Oops. You know, play. And this is a spigot server, so you know you can install plugins. There's already a pretty good amount of uh, commands integrated with it. So right here, you know what you're gonna do is if you just want to use this for like uh, single player purposes, localhost will be the IP you connect with, and you'll go ahead and, and you'll be on. You know uh, you can op yourself, right? Op bam headshot bk. And then, you know, you have access to all the commands, game mode, creative. So, yeah, that's that. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to port forward. So, you're going to type stop in the, in the uh, console. You can minimize Minecraft. Now, type in CMD in your search bar. And you're going to want to type in IP config. Uh, wow, config. All right, so if you're using an Ethernet, Ethernet adapter like me, you'll see this little... Um, like it looks like a computer monitor, you'll see that logo right there. And you're going to want to go ahead and look for the Ethernet adapter internet. But if you're using Wi-Fi, you're going to want to look for the next connection down. 
Um, the one you're going to want to look at is your IPv4 address right here. Yours will not be the same as mine and your default gateway. So in order to port forward, you're going to need your default gateway to reach the port forwarding window. So you're going to go to Google and type that default gateway in, which is more than likely going to be this right here, but it could be different. And this will come up. Wait, not this exactly what's about to come up on my screen, but a modem control panel will come up. The username is admin for most panels and the password is password. If the password is different, look on your modem for the information to sign in. Most of the time it's on there. Uh, if not, if you're, you think your parents have changed it, ask your parents or call the ISP. They may know. So you're going to go ahead and hit apply, log in, whatever it may say. And it's going to go ahead and load up. Mine is a bit slower for some reason. I don't know. I really don't like this modem. And uh, most of the time it's going to be under firewall or it may be under advanced setup or something. Mine's a little different. This is for an Aris router. Um, most of the time, it'll say like port forwarding or port triggering. Mine says virtual servers. And um, for the purpose of this video, I have to go ahead and delete a previous port forward. I had it in here. Uh, sorry guys. And yeah, I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. My, one, my modem a little, once again is a little different but it's usually it's really the same process for every modem it just looks different and it makes it so much more complicated than it really needs to be so it's going to say add or create whatever and you're going to hit add you're going to type in the description so we're going to do minecraft server right inbound port 25565 default port for all minecraft servers all right and then you're going to that remember that ipv4 address we got you're going to type that in right here, 192.168.0, whatever the last numbers of your IP are. Make sure it's set to both TCP and UDP, or else the server report forward will not function. Now, I could, um, I lost my train of thought, guys. So once that goes through, you know, you hit port forward, you know, add, create, or whatever it says at the bottom, it's going to go ahead and port forward it. It'll update whatever your unit does, and then you're good to go. Other people can join your server. But you're asking, how do I get them to join my server? Well, I'm going to make this very clear. Do not give them your gateway or this IP right here. Do not give them the IPv4 or the gateway. Neither of those IPs will work. What you need to do is go to a website like what is my IP or IPChicken.com, which I will link in the description as well, and get this IP right here. Now, if it's just a bunch of letters, that means you need to try maybe another website. What is my IP? And something like this may be showing up for you. And that's why I'm saying try different websites. I'll link both of these in the description. Different websites work for different people. Sometimes your name address shows. Sometimes your actual IP shows. Sometimes your IPv6 shows. Um, but to hold down the confusion, just use the IP right here. And most of the time to get people to connect, you're going to have to supply them with the port like this, like 25565 with a colon. And it won't show up for me because the server's not started, obviously. But the server will work for your friends now. One more thing I want to go over is that you can install plugins. Now, there's a lot, there's such a variety of plugins. But if you just type in like spigot plugins, right? What's going to come up is this right here, spigot. Uh, it would actually be easier to show you guys craft bucket plugins because you have to sign up to use spigot um, Bucket plugins and it'll take you to projects and you get all this cool stuff I highly recommend essentials as like one of your first plugins because you know Essentials all that you don't need all of these. I would recommend essentials jar protect spawn chat Right, and then you can start up the server and those should load unless they're for the wrong version of minecraft and in that case, um, I would recommend using Essentials X. Yeah, Essentials X is kind of like the off-brand, not the off-brand, but the newer version of Essentials. You know, if you go to, if you go here, see, look, this is my external IP with the port I told you guys about. You can actually join it now once it's port forwarded. You don't have to join through localhost. Um, Essentials failed to load, read the log file. It's because it's for the wrong version of Minecraft. But I'm gonna go ahead and link the plugins in the description. Um, I'll leave the server.bat, a pre-made server for you guys with a working essentials and everything. And I'll see you guys next time if you have any questions. 
Uh, please rate, comment, subscribe. If I didn't cover anything, let me know. I think I, I feel like I kind of went fast, but see you guys around. Tell me, tell me, tell me pretty lies. Look me in the face. Tell me that you love me.